Linda, where are you? It's getting late. What time are you planning on getting home? You've been completely neglecting the chores that need to be done in this house. You left early this morning without doing a single thing. How many hours do you think have gone by? Your irresponsibility is ridiculous. You're really putting me in a tough situation here. Get back here right now and clean up this mess. I'm sorry for the delay. It's been a hectic day. I'm just about to go to the market, and then I'll head home. Well, if you're going to the market, don't forget to get some bread. I need some soup and beer for your father-in-law, too. Make sure you get that as well. You're driving here, right? You should be able to put all of that in your trunk. Okay, I'll get everything. And how are you feeling now? Are you any better? Yes, I'm not completely better, but my stomach has settled down a bit. To be honest, it's been nice to having you around. I was thrilled about it at first. However, you tend to get sick very easily, and you're not as considerate as I had hoped. I actually feel like there's nothing good coming out of living with you. You barely help. You always use your sickness as an excuse to avoid all the work. I'm sorry to hear about that, but please don't think it's intentional. I really can't help it. At the least, I'd like you to fulfill your role as a daughter-in-law. If you could do at least that, I'd be satisfied. But it doesn't seem likely. I guess it'll be some time before I have the chance to see any grandkids. Actually, since you mentioned that, I have something to tell you. What is it? Don't tell me your body is too weak to conceive. Don't tell me that. No, it's the opposite. I haven't told you, but I'm pregnant. What? Are you serious? Are you really pregnant? Is there a baby inside you right now? Yes, I'm three months pregnant. I didn't want to say anything in the first trimester, but since it's almost over, I feel a bit more secure. Daniela, I'm pregnant! Oh my god. You should have told me sooner! So was today's visit to the doctor actually an ultrasound visit? It was. To be honest, I wasn't planning on telling anyone until next month. Once everything is stable and the baby is safe. But I am getting sicker than expected. Because of that in the pregnancy, I may need more support and compassion, but I don't want to trouble anyone. That's why I decided to tell you the truth. We are living together, so you do know that I would have noticed your pregnancy before four months, right? If you had told me, I wouldn't have been pushing you to come home and tidy up all this time. So what's the sex? Is it a boy or a girl? Which one? I don't know yet. It's too soon to tell. Oh, yeah, you're only three months along, so you wouldn't know yet. But I'm so happy! I'm going to have another grandchild, and this will be your first child. It's amazing! Oh, thank you so much. I'm happy too. I feel so much better now that I've told you. Let's have a feast to celebrate the news. I'll make something special. I'll tell George so we can all rejoice together. While you're at the store, pick up some steak and potatoes. That's one of your favorites, right? It is! I'll get that and a few other things. It's going to get busy around here from now on. Once you find out the sex, let me know right away. Don't wake like you did this time. Of course. I'll try to get home as fast as I can. Relax. Don't rush yourself. Just drive carefully. It would be tragic if you got into an accident. All because of a dinner party. Take your time. Thank you so much for understanding. I'll take my time and get home as soon as possible. Linda, I'm on my way home. Make sure all of the chores and such are complete by the time I get there. Pick the weeds out of the yard too, please. Okay, I'll be sure to have it all done. But Daniela, I'm not feeling too well today. I've been feeling really dizzy, so it'd make more time than usual for me to finish everything. Are you complaining about your health again? Maybe it's because you aren't exercising enough. Didn't they tell you that you need to gain some strength so you can have a healthy delivery? I don't think that's the issue. I feel like I'm getting sick because of the hormone imbalance. You're just too weak-minded. You need to be more confident and push through all of this. You're a mother now, Linda. This is just the beginning. If you don't get yourself together, it's going to be much more difficult for you in the future. You're right. I've just never experienced this before, but I don't know if I can fully blame it on my mental strength like you suggest. I have been going out of my way to pray that you have an easy birth. Don't give up on me now. 
If you do, I don't even think God could be of much help to you. You need to help yourself and push through. My daughter is having twins and is doing just fine. If anything, she should be going through a much harder time than you. You only have one child inside of you. Stop complaining. You're fine. If you put it like that, all I can do is agree. It must be hard to be pregnant with two babies. I'll try to deal with this as best I can. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to criticize you or anything. You know that, right? It's just that you tend to take breaks or give up at the smallest hint of pain. You end up laying down and doing nothing for the rest of the day. I don't think that's a good habit to have. Once you become a mother, there will be many times when you're sick or feeling horrible. But you will have to push through to take care of your child in the house. You need to start preparing yourself for that now, not later. Being pregnant means you're already a mother. You need to start acting like one. Thank you for caring enough to tell me that. It seems like I have a lot to prepare for. On top of that, you and my daughter are pregnant at the same time. Who would have thought something like this could happen? Between the two of you, I'm so busy. Before you give birth, we need to take you to the church and get you prayed over in hopes of a smooth delivery. Right now, I can only imagine you having a boy. We have to make sure you're healthy enough to give birth to him. I'll make sure that happens. Like I said, I'll try my best. But no matter what the gender of the baby is, I'm gonna cherish it. I don't care if it's a boy or a girl. Even if that's how you feel, I'm praying for a boy. That would be best. However, regardless of the situation, the baby has my son's genes, so it'll all be okay. I'd hate if the child comes out with a weak immune system like yours. To have a life where you're always sick and lying around is no life at all. I don't wish that upon my grandchild. Hopefully, my son's genes are more dominant. Don't say anything negative before giving birth to that child. It'll taint the pregnancy. Again, I'm so sorry about that. There's nothing I can do. I wouldn't be living like this if I didn't have to. Anyway, I think I'm gonna get back to cleaning now. Oh, wow, are my messages getting in the way of you cleaning? Am I interrupting you or something? No, that's not what I'm trying to say at all. Because of my situation, cleaning takes me a lot longer than usual. I just want to make sure I get everything finished. I don't want to cause any more trouble for you than I already have. Okay, well, make sure everything I mentioned is done to perfection before I get home. Being pregnant isn't some kind of sickness, so it won't hinder you from your everyday chores. Get everything done and make sure you do it without complaining from now on. Hey, Daniela. I finished my checkup at the hospital. I'm on my way home now. So, how's the baby? Tell me it's healthy, right? There's nothing wrong, right? Don't worry. The baby's fine. The doctor said it's growing healthily and everything looks great. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to hear that. I was so worried. Now that that's out of the way, there's something that I want to tell you. My daughter has decided to come back home and give birth here. So I need you to get out of the house for a bit. Excuse me? Daniela, I'm pregnant too! Did you forget? Are you kicking a pregnant woman out of your house? That may be true, but isn't it obvious? My daughter's child and pregnancy takes precedence over yours. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Go to your own family's house and give birth there. That shouldn't be a problem, should it? You're the one who asked me to come over here and pushed me to give birth in a hospital near you. Because of that, I've done all of the preparation to make it happen and haven't done any of the paperwork necessary to give birth in a hospital elsewhere. There's still three months left before you give birth. That's plenty of time to handle things and figure it all out. I need you to leave by the end of this month. That's plenty of time for you to find a hospital back in your hometown where you can give birth. I guess I have no choice. I'm really shocked by this. Is there something that you're in disagreement with? No, not really. It's just that I haven't given any thought to returning home for this. I'm a bit thrown off. If it wasn't for you two being pregnant at the same time, this wouldn't be happening. But it's reality. After realizing this, didn't you at least consider it a possibility? Not to mention the fact that my daughter is giving birth to twins. That alone puts her ahead of you, in terms of importance. Helping her requires more effort and assistance. 
It's honestly exhausting, but that can't be helped. You do have a point. I can see why you're making the decision that you are. I'll call my parents and let them know that I'll be going back home. Yes, please do that. Even after giving birth, my daughter will be staying here with me for a bit. Don't bother coming back here for about six months. She should be ready to leave by then. Okay, that won't be a problem. I wish you the best of luck. But isn't this actually a good thing? Your parents are most likely going to be ecstatic when they hear the news. No matter how you think of it, as a parent, the most beautiful babies are the ones that your own give birth to. I know they are going to be very happy to witness the birth. Oh, wait, wait. I'm so sorry. That was probably a little rude. I indirectly told you my daughter's baby will be cuter than yours. <laughs> I probably should not have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's okay. I didn't take offense to it. Anyway, if you end up giving birth to a boy, that'll be the ideal outcome. But if you end up having a girl, my daughter's baby will definitely be prioritized over yours. She'd be the one to actually inherit everything, so it makes sense. Just let me say one thing. Just because you're going back home doesn't mean you should be lazy. Don't lay around doing nothing like you have been. You need to kill that habit. If it's a boy, you won't even be able to relax. Raising a boy is like a constant test of your physical strength. I won't be there to look over you, so make sure you're exercising every day and gaining strength. I will. Don't worry. I appreciate the advice. Well, that's all I really had to say this time around. Start getting your things ready as soon as possible. Remember, I need you out within the month. Linda, when are you coming back from your parents' house? How much time do you think has elapsed since you gave birth? You've been away for too long. Hi, Daniela. It's been ages since I last heard from you. I think it's been exactly six months since you kicked me out of the house. That's how long you told me to stay away for, right? Yeah, whatever. Just get back here already. You've already delivered. So it's high time for me to see my grandson. I can't wait to see him. As expected, my daughter's twins were adorable. They're cute, but it's a pity that her face looks exactly like her mother-in-law's. Fortunately, your child resembles his father. That's such a blessing for me. Do you really think so? Also, I think it's high time I told you. But I have no intention of returning to your home. Are you out of your mind? What are you saying right now? How can you possibly say something like that when you're married to my son? You haven't even mastered your duties at this point. You're nothing but a half-baked housewife. I still have to teach you how to do your chores properly. Oh no. Thanks, but no thanks, Daniela. I'll manage. What do you mean by I'll manage? That's not something for you to decide on your own. It seems like you've been spoiled rotten during your time at your parents. Both your son and husband agreed that it would be fine if I didn't come back to your house, so I kindly disagree with what you're saying. What? What do you mean? They agreed. You talked to them about this absurd idea of yours? I did, but that's really none of your business. I've already started my life with my child in a new house. As soon as you told me to get lost, Danny and I started looking for a new place. In other words, what I'm telling you is that both Danny and I moved. You moved? What? You're lying, right? That makes no sense. Besides, you still have all of your stuff here at my place. You couldn't have moved. Did you check the closets and drawers? Danny has been taking things out bit by bit for me. A lot should be gone by now. He came by when you were at home, gathered everything, and moved all of the big stuff. You didn't notice because you were always using the furniture that was there originally. So, wait. Does that mean that Danny saying he would stop by to see the baby on his way home from work was a lie? Instead, he was actually going home to that new house he bought? Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. And you said my husband agreed to this mess? George and Danny both warned me about you. And they were completely right. 
You've been very rude to me since we moved in together and forced me to do things against my will after I got pregnant. Did you already forget how you've been treating me? Why would I come back? I did and said everything in order to help you. It was all for your own good. And last time I checked, you were nodding along with everything I said. So I really don't get it. What's the problem? I definitely resisted everything you were saying at first. But the way I phrased everything probably gave you the false impression that I was agreeing. But what's done is done. We can't change anything now. We had just moved in together, and I was sure you wanted it to go well, so I didn't have much room to say what I really wanted. And to be honest, I couldn't stand the unfair treatment I was getting from you anymore. For that reason, I won't tolerate it anymore. Nor will I hold back. You do know you gave birth to the next heir of the family business, right? Get back here this instant. Stop this nonsense. There's too much for us to do to be wasting time on this mess. I think you have it wrong. There's not one thing at the house that I need to do. Please do what you have to do to forget about us and move forward. Just worry about yourself from now on. Please. Are you being serious right now? We are officially cutting ties with you. We want nothing to do with you anymore. You're cutting ties? Linda, what exactly are you trying to say here? If you're really saying what I think you mean, then I'll never forgive you for doing something so selfish. Oh, really? You won't forgive me? Are you trying to hurt me by saying that? <laughs> There's nothing else you can do or say to hurt me, let alone stop me from cutting ties with you. Tell me, is there something you can do? Anything? I won't be helping you two at all when it comes to the baby celebrations. You won't have any of my assistance. I'll make sure my daughter's babies get all of the attention. I'll spoil her rotten and won't give any attention to your baby. That doesn't bother us at all. In fact, things will be better that way. Regardless, that's exactly what cutting ties means. You'll have no part in any of our lives. But we do plan on staying connected with Danny's dad. Please don't misunderstand. When we call asking for him, he will surely be a part of his grandchild's life. There's no way I'll let him be involved if I'm not. No matter what you say, I don't think this is something you can stop. Even your husband couldn't forgive your attitude and actions towards me. What you say won't make a difference at all. Instead of siding with you, he decided to side with us on this matter. Oh, and I spoke to your daughter, too. Apparently, staying with you was an awful decision. She says she never wants your help with her baby again. What did you just say? Do you have any idea how much I did to help her when she was here? I did hear about a few things. She told me how you forced her to breastfeed and clean the house, in addition to taking care of her newborn twins. No wonder she was so angry. Anyone in that situation would be. She also said she didn't stay with you for long. She left soon after giving birth. I guess that's why you tried rushing me back sooner than we had originally planned. Am I right? All of this complaining and bad-mouthing must be due to her hormones. They've been a little out of control since she gave birth. It wasn't even that serious. We just had a little argument and that's it. That may be the case for you, but people don't forget how others make them feel, especially when it's during one of the most difficult time in their lives. I heard you even looked her straight in the face and said her twins were ugly. Did you really say something so insensitive to a woman who just gave birth? That's not something you say to someone who just went through hours of labor to bring their children into the world. It was a mistake. I didn't even think I said it out loud. It was a small mistake. That said, are you really not coming back to the house? No, I'm not. I already have a house of my own to return to. I don't need your house anymore. I was really looking forward to meeting my grandson, Linda. I know I said a lot of things to you and was probably really annoying, but I did it out of love and to prepare you for what's to come. I wanted to make sure you'd be able to handle everything that is about to happen. 
If only you could have actually listened to me when I said I wasn't feeling well. That part was very important. You can't ignore someone's health for your personal goals. You were right. Pregnancy isn't a sickness, but it takes a toll on your body the same way, if not worse at times. More so, everyone deals with pregnancy differently. Just because you're a star and didn't have any problems during yours, it doesn't mean it would be the same for me. I'm so sorry. I'll properly apologize. So please, stop saying you're not coming home. It's a little too late for that. I've already moved, and that's not gonna change. And just because you apologize doesn't mean I'll move back. I have no plans of ever living with you again. That would be the dumbest decision ever. You're the one who told me to get out in the first place. That's not what happened. All I did was tell you to go visit your parents' house. I never said to leave. But at first, didn't you tell me to give birth in your hometown near your house? You didn't mention me going back to my parents. That's the whole reason I wasn't prepared to visit my parents' house in the first place. It wasn't originally a part of the plan. You knew that, and you still suddenly told me to get out. Do you know how difficult it was to find a hospital with such short notice? Even when I did find one, they wouldn't let me register. I heard you even forced her daughter to come home to give birth. She didn't initially plan for that either. Of course. I just wanted to be near her and be her support during the birthing process. Then you should have told me to go back to my parents' house from the beginning. Why wait? But not doing that. I also caused problems for Star as well. To be honest, I wasn't thinking clearly. I completely forgot that you weren't going back home until I started talking to Star. She mentioned that you weren't going home, and that's when I realized the same thing. I had no choice but to rush you out to make space for her. Daniela, it doesn't really matter. I'm tired of hearing your excuses at this point. And like I said before, I want nothing else to do with you, so I won't even be seeing or speaking to you after this. So, am I really not going to meet my grandson? He's supposed to be next to inherit the business. Can you stop assuming things? Next to inherit the business? No, that's not what we have in mind for our child. Our child will grow up like a normal kid without all of that. And you keep saying grandson as if you were already told the sex. Whether it's a boy or a girl, we can do without discrimination and preferential treatment. Just the thought of that is ridiculously uncomfortable. Linda, I am so sorry. I'll try my best to not say anything rude or offensive from now on. I never meant for anything to come out that way. I won't be asking you to do any housework or force you to do anything you don't want to, neither. I promise. You don't have to live with me. That's fine. Just don't cut ties with me, please. I've already made up my mind about this. I won't be changing at all. After forcing me to live with you, I've acquired nothing but dislike towards you. There's not one good memory I have for my time with you. And the one thing I can't forgive is how you've kicked me out of the house. So this is all your fault. You deserve the outcome. How about you take responsibility for what you've done and not make excuses? I cut off all contact with my mother-in-law after confronting her. I felt liberated. My husband received many calls from her begging for forgiveness, but it was too late. He was always unhappy with how she treated me, and he couldn't let it go. We were planning to move out anyway, so nothing changed. We both severed ties with her. So did Star, who also prohibited her from seeing her baby. My father-in-law was the only one who could visit the twins. I heard that Daniela is repentant and has changed her ways. But regardless of what she does, I have no intentions of ever seeing her again until the kids are old enough to say they want to meet her themselves. I moved to a new home with my parents' help. They've been a great support. They help me with cleaning and taking care of the baby. I've always had a weak immune system and it's caused a number of problems. It's unfortunate, but I'm sure I'll need the help of people around me for many things as time goes on. Even then, 
I want to do my best to do everything that I can and work hard to live a healthy and strong life. I was grateful to them and everyone who helped me. I promised myself and my family that I would create a happy home with my husband and kids.